Hello, this is Dan from RetroTowers.co.uk and this video is about fixing the common screen problems and sound problems for the Sega Game Gear. Screen problems include ghost lines, dim screen and screen only visible when looking at it from a really sharp unnatural angle. To repair the system you'll need the following equipment. A Game Gear capacitor replacement kit, a 4.5mm game bit and a crosswing screwdriver. These can all be purchased from our website RetroTowers.co.uk you also need a pair of scissors, a pair of pliers, a soldering iron, some solder, and optional, a desolder pump. These can all be purchased from any good hardware store. You'll also need to know how to solder and desolder. Step 1. Remove all the cross head screws from the Game Gear housing shell. Step 2. Remove the 4.5mm security screw with the 4.5mm game bit. Step 3. Take the shell apart like in this video. Some capacitors might be leaking. If you see any leaking, then you know you definitely need to replace these. But faulty capacitors don't always leak. The capacitors are held together with glue as well as solder. To break the glue, you'll need to use pliers and slowly move them from side to side until you hear a cracking sound. Do not move them too much, or you could completely rip them off your game gear and then cause your game gear to be forever broken. My soldering skills aren't so great, so this is a short animation of the theory behind desoldering and soldering the capacitors. There will be an annotation on the screen to a video of someone desoldering and soldering a component with a real soldering iron. There will also be a link in the description to the same videos. Once you've replaced one capacitor, you can replace every capacitor. Please make sure that positive and negative are aligned correctly on the capacitor. To find out which side is positive and negative on an electrolytic capacitor, watch the following clip and it will show you exactly how to do it. After that clip, I will show you how to replace the soundboard capacitors. Please remember this, to find out which way is positive and negative on the capacitor, you should find the shortest wire and that will usually mean negative. Another way to find out is if you're using an electrolytic capacitor like the ones in this video, there will also be a grey part with a rectangular minus. This side is negative. You need to make sure that when you remove the old capacitors you remember which side the negative and positive needs to be or it can potentially ruin your game gear and the capacitors. Soundboard is found in the top right corner of the game gear. To get to it, you'll need to remove the four screws on the metal casing and the two screws on the soundboard. After this, you'll need to remove the two wires connecting the soundboard to the mainboard, like I do in this video. Now, this is the soundboard, here is the sound wheel, here is the headphone slot. And there are the soundboard capacitors. The five looking silver objects are the soundboard capacitors. The two smaller capacitors are usually what is wrong with the soundboard, but it's always best to replace all of them so the game gear will last longer and one of the bigger capacitors could have a problem anyway. When replacing capacitors, please make sure that positive and negative are aligned correctly. This is another animation for how to remove the Sega Game Gear soundboard capacitors. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, please hit the like button. If you have a question, please comment or email us at retrotowers at gmail.com. If you like other videos on this channel, please subscribe. If you need any Game Gear capacitors, screwdrivers, or any retro gaming related product, please check our website retrotowers.co.uk and we might have it in stock for you. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again in a future video.